Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at a Rotel and the model number is RA-01. In terms of general specifications, power output is 40 watts per channel into 8 ohms and the user has the ability to select between dual sets of speakers. So when you look at the front fascia, just near to the headphone socket to the right hand side, that's the selection button. So you can turn off all speaker connections and maybe you're only choosing to use the headphones or you can select speaker set A speaker set B or both speaker set A and B which is a nice feature and then in terms of frequency response it's 10 Hz to 40 kHz and total harmonic distortion comes in at 0.03% and in terms of your inputs you can connect a moving magnet type cartridge so if you have a turntable you can connect that directly and that's 2.5 millivolts which is standard and then for all of your line inputs that's auxiliary 1, auxiliary 2, CD tuner tape that's 150 millivolts and you also have a pre-amplifier output as well, so that's 1 volt with an impedance of 470 ohms. And then in terms of dimensions, you're looking at 435 millimeters wide by a depth of 342, and then a height comes in at 72, and weight is 5.9 kilograms. Now these amplifiers, when you look from the front fascia, have a very sleek design. I do like them. And the RA01 would really be termed as a entry level amplifier, but it does have some nice features because you have the individual bass, treble, and balance controls, and also the ability to just go direct mode, which is the tone defeat. And then, in terms of the selection buttons, it doesn't support a remote control, but you have the blue LED just above the power indication. The round ring, which is around the volume control, is blue plastic, so it doesn't illuminate, but again, adds an extra touch of class. And then you can also select between tape or source and then your individual inputs. Now, what was the issue when this amplifier sort of came into the workshop? Well, it was a little bit strange, and you'll see in a moment exactly what I'm referring to when I say it was strange. So here when we look from the top of the amplifier, you can see a very, very clean layout, and Rotel tended to keep, or still does keep, this very, very nice type of layout, and good quality components used throughout. So you can see the toroidal transformer, which is on the left, towards the rear of the amplifier, then you can see the power output transistors which are mounted onto the heatsink and then the large smoothing capacitors and then as you move towards the front the individual selection switches and if you had a rear camera view of this then you would see the individual potentiometers as I said earlier for your volume control, bass, treble and balance and then just to the right hand side towards the rear is the phono input stage but we'll sort of look at that in more detail. Now, when you have these amplifiers in, the most common issue that you find is intermittent loss of sound. So irrespective of what this fault was, the speaker protection relays are always replaced. So those are the two relays that you see there. And these are what we call 24 volt DC coil. And they are double pole changeover relays. And the rating for the current for the switching contacts is 3 amps. And then what you can also see is just in front of there is the bridge rectifier. That's the large black square component. And then you also have the individual fuses. So you have two fuses which are for the toroidal transformer on the secondary. And then you also have two sets of fuses as well for the fuse protection relating to the outputs. And then here what you can see is a zoom in view of the phono stage. And what they're using is a single dual operational amplifier. And as I said, this is supporting a moving magnet type cartridge. Now, one of the most common issues that you find relating to the low voltage power supply is this corrosive glue. So what I've done here is I've taken a photograph from an amplifier, which is still the RA01, but from a unit which I had in the workshop some months ago just to show you exactly what I'm referring to. Now this glue is used extensively in many many amplifiers of this era and it causes a lot of issues. It goes both conductive and it also goes corrosive. Now what does this circuit provide? Well this circuit provides the plus and minus 18 volt supply rails and these supply rails are also used for the operational amplifiers within the tone control circuit. Now the issue with this amplifier was that the direct mode or the tone defeat mode worked correctly but if the user selected the tone control circuits then they really didn't operate and it was kind of low level distortion but there was clearly something going on so when the top cover was removed from the amplifier and you sort of did the first visual inspection what I found was that the glue had been removed so clearly someone had been in here and taken some form of repair work but what was a little bit more surprising was that the zener diodes had been replaced and you presume they'd been replaced with the correct voltage rating of the zener diode 
There's also as well, these Zener diodes are 1 watt, whereas the original are 500 milliwatts. But that's not really of a concern. It's what you found when you did the voltage measurement across them. And what you found was that the voltage was 7.5 volts. So when you think that this is generating both the plus and minus rails, also used for the operational amplifiers, as I said, within the tone control circuits, then the op amps really weren't functioning at all, which is rather odd because the service manual is available and you could, you know, clearly see that these should be 18 volt zeners and not 7.5. But I don't have the history of this amplifier and I don't have any explanation as to why the incorrect zener diodes would have been installed. But as you see here, what I've done is I've installed the correct zeners, 500 milliwatts and 18 volts. And as soon as that was done, what you then found was that the tone control circuits worked correctly, as expected, and you had good quality sound, and when you adjusted the different balance and treble and bass controls, all worked perfectly. So, a little bit odd. So once that work was done, you know, what else do you actually need to do on the amplifier? Well, like all amplifiers, you're still going to make a visual inspection of the solder joints, just to verify that they're okay. And what you find with the Rotel amplifiers, you may see some related which are heat, for example, and then you can then correct that by just resoldering those joints. But overall, you don't find major issues with these amplifiers, not like some of the other brands of the same time period. So the user controls, switches and potentiometers were cleaned with deoxy just to ensure a nice clean operation with no noise. And then the next thing to do was just to verify what was the output bias for the respective channels. So here what I've done is I've just provided an extract of the service manual. And what you can see here is that the correct millivolt should be 4 millivolts. And you measure that millivoltage across the test points. And then you would then adjust the preset potentiometer here until you have a reading of 4 millivolts. So here what you see is the left channel. And you, what you can see is the audio power output transistors and also the driver transistors mounted onto the heatsink. And then you can also see the larger 2 watt emitter resistors which are 0.22 ohms. And then just to the left hand side you can see the test connections and effectively it is measuring across one of the emitter resistors. And then towards just off centre you can see the small little blue preset potentiometer. And then when we connected the multimeter what you found was that it was actually high. So this is the amplifier being left on for about 20 to 25 minutes, nice stable environment, and we needed to make the adjustment. So once that adjustment is made, we bring it back now down to 4 millivolts. So the left channel now is reading correctly. And then here what you see is the right channel. So it's just the same as the previous channel. And again, right hand side you can see the test connector just across the emitter resistor, the preset output transistors, and then also the driver transistors. What was interesting was that you found pretty much the same higher millivolt reading on the right channel as you did for the left. So running high here at 7.2 and then to make the adjustment then to restore it back as you see then to 4 millivolts. And this adjustment is very straightforward to do. It's not complicated. What I've said in previous tutorials is you may well find that if the presets have never been moved since factory adjustment they can be sometimes a little bit twitchy or a little bit dirty. So what you would do there is just depower the amplifier and then you can just spray a bit of deoxy or contact clean and just work the presets backwards and forwards a number of times. Return them roughly to the the original position and then you can then make your final adjustment and you should find that it comes in very very smoothly. So a rather odd repair, not complicated but a little bit strange. I've never seen anything quite like that before that someone would go to the time and effort to replace the Zeno diodes but for whatever reason the incorrect values were inserted. So here as we draw this to a close you can see the two speaker protection relays. These were the ones that were replaced because of worn and oxidised contacts to prevent the future issue associated with intermittent loss of sound. And then as we said these are the 7.5 volt 1 watt Zener diodes. And then the amplifier of course goes on to a test. And normally it runs for probably about 3 or 4 hours. And as I said previously I really do like these amplifiers that are a joy to work on. And the sound quality is excellent. The other good thing is that to get access to the solder side of the circuit board, you just remove the bottom cover plate. But just be aware also that you need to make sure that the grounding screw, which is towards the rear of the amplifier, which screws through into the base plate, it's quite near to one of the protection fuses, is in place. If it's loose, then sometimes you can get some humming or some noise. So just make sure that all those screws are nice and tight. So I really appreciate you stopping by on this rather short overview tutorial. 
And if you have any questions or you need any more information, by all means, come back to me and email audio amplifier servicing at AOL.com. And I'll be more than happy to provide any guidance or support that you may require. So until the next time, all the very best. Cheers and bye bye.